Good afternoon traders, as always hope you've had a successful trading day and a successful trading week. Dollar really taking a tumble here on a back end of softer uh, ISM PMI US data there. And we've also got uh, FOMC minutes later, so do bear that in mind because that's likely going to create some additional uh, dollar index volatility there. But July, 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 why is this such a crucial month for the euro? Well, it stems down to one key theme, and that is the EU recovery fund, as you probably guessed. And we've spoken about this before, so if you want to go back to the previous vlog where we spoke about the EU recovery fund and just sort of get the technicalities there, then go, go ahead and do that because this is more of an update. So in terms of what's happened between then and now, one of the major problems was the fact that Germany were identified as one of the EU uh, members that were not really particularly keen on agreeing to the EU recovery fund. And the main reason is because they were worried about the impact that it would have on their domestic taxpayers. And the whole logic behind that is the fact that this EU uh, recovery plan, the, the money in there, it's not free money, right? It's debt obligations. So members are allocated uh, money from this e-recovery fund will have to pay that money back. You know, again, it's not free money. And when you have a country like Germany that are based, that's basically saying that actually domestic economy is doing quite well, we're recovering from the impact of the virus, our macroeconomic data is showing a positive sign. Do we need to take on additional debt obligations? We'd think not, because at the end of the day, the way that countries are going to deal with all this debt is by increasing taxes, right? And that could be individual income tax it could be corporate tax so there's a whole bunch of different taxes that they could increase in order to recoup that debt and, and pay it back uh, and so that's what germany was saying and also there was an issue where german lawyers had um, said that the bond purchasing aspect of the eu recovery funds uh, did have a legality issue with it and that sort of issue has now been more or less resolved and that's a positive there but most recently, Germany have come out and said that they do expect a positive outcome from the meeting in July, uh, which has taken place between the 16th and 17th of this month. And that for me is more or less Germany indirectly saying that they will approve this. Uh, because remember, you need all 27 members to un unilaterally approve uh, this e-recovery fund for it to be deployed, right? So Germany wouldn't say that unless they were on board. So. In my opinion, unofficially, they've said that uh, they'll more or less approve it when the time comes, which is a major positive, I think, and most of the reason why kind of Euro has remained sort of up floats, uh, generally speaking. So in terms of then kind of the other issues, well, Germany is not the only sort of party that was identified as, you know, not particularly keen on backing the EU recovery funds. You also have other members, and which is why we're seeing people like President Macron, who's uh, of course president of France, now rushing to places like the Netherlands to try and get other EU members, uh, well, other EU leader members to uh, back this EU recovery fund. So the desperation there is, is really quite real. And it makes sense because you have uh, countries like Spain and Italy that have accumulated a huge amount of debt even before the COVID-19 crisis. So as you can imagine, all COVID-19 has done has really amplified those debt levels. So. You know, with, with respect to those kind of countries, they are in uh, more than ever, they need the money, right? They need the money supply. They need uh, to be able to get that money supply and roll out their stimulus packages and to deal with the current debt levels that they have in place. So, you know, for, for them, the desperation is, is very much real and a very much a, a deep concern. But then you have other countries who are looking at their economy and saying, well, actually we're improving. Do we really need to take on that debt? Taking a sort of similar stance to Germany, so right now it's just a race of EU members that need the funding, desperately trying to convince other EU members that don't necessarily need the funding um, and trying to you know, unilaterally create that agreement there. So in the weeks to come, if we do see more and more members showing sort of optimism towards the deal, that's going to be a good thing for the euro. We'll start to see probably rally towards the upside. But of course, the main event is going to be the meeting itself, which again is occurring between the 16th and 17th of July this month. If we do come out of that meeting with there being a, a no deal uh, or you know just no approval of cost abroad uh, from certain EU members and obviously the EU recovery funds will not be able to be deployed and that's going to be uh, I think a serious problem for uh, certain EU countries again like Spain and Italy uh, who have really high debt levels and that in turn is probably going to see a pretty sharp sell off in the euro but vice versa if we do see an agreement that's going to be a huge support booster for the euro and we should see a rally towards the upside.